Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a video for the hop of my favorite things for Art Joy is Sharing. And my favorite thing to make is little books, our little books. I like making little books. This one is a leftover piece of some kind of packaging and I just made a small little book out of it. And when I make them, I try to remember to put a post-it note on it because I want the measurement so that I know how wide it is. And so I put on here three and three-fourths inches tall and then two inches wide. When I say it's two inches wide, I mean two inches from the inside seam here to the outside of the book. So I know I have to double this measurement here or shave a little off the double, double side double measurement. So what I've taken is B paper, B watercolor paper, and I've made each one with, this one has three, and let's see, this one has three, three little pages in it, and this one has two little pages, and oh well, there's another one. Oh, three. These both have three. This one has two. Well, I need to get it together. Anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm going to draw on these, and then I'm going to make myself a miniature flower book. Okay, so let me get started drawing. Okay, so the first step in this is to decide how far apart I want the holes in here. So uh, my friend Debbie Cork from the UK mailed me one of these. So I'm going to use this, and I'm going to poke holes in my stuff. So I have to decide how far I want my holes to be in the book. So this is v-shaped this thing right here is this is flat but this is v-shaped so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put this this is also v-shaped I know it's hard to see alright so I put this down on top and you screw the little screw jobbies in that's their official term screw jobbies then you take a pokey tool that also is an official name <laughs> And then I have to decide how far I want my signatures to be. I think I might, let's see, where's center? I think maybe this should be center. There's that one. And then maybe this one up here, except for the thing is it's not even. So I have this, and I have one, two, and this and one, two. So that's not going to work. So. What I might do is one, two, three, four holes, one, two, three, four holes. So that's what I'll do. I'll count one, two, three, four. That's not enough. Maybe I do five. Let me see where my center hole is here. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, five will do. And then here's the center hole. One, two, three, four, five. And now, there you go. They may not be perfect, but they're done, and that's the most important part. All right, I'm going to poke the holes on the rest of these, and then I'll be right back. All right, it looks like my holes are pretty much lined up, and we're good to go. So now I can start sketching, and I have my holes ready. And then what I'll do is I'll mark them inside the book, the spine of the book, as soon as I get ready. Okay, so the next phase is to get a needle. Wow, that one looks kind of fat. Let's do a smaller one. Hope I can get the thread through there. Oh, well, this one's already threaded. Um, let me save that for another book. This is very thin thread. So um, I got this trick from Carla at Cage Fish. She likes to work in signatures. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these together temporarily while I work on them because I want the pages to stay in the proper order of which they were punched and make sure that, you know, they all stay together. So I'm just going to do a very quick little put together. It's not going to be anything that's going to stay because I still have to sew them into the book. So I'm just going to make a little quickie little thing here. And sew them together so that they're all in the same signature together when I work in them. Okay. Sorry, my phone is going off. Somebody must be at the front door. All right, let's do this. All right, and then I'm going to do all three of these like this so they stay together while I'm working in them. 
I'm not doing any sloppy wet work or anything, so it's really not that big of a deal. But I want my stuff to stay together because I cut it together and I want it to stay in the same sequence. Oops, can I put that? I need to put that underneath there. As you saw in the last clip, I was working on the belly band and I have several places where I put creases in it with the scoreboard and I tried to make it so that it would give it room to expand. But since I'm not gluing anything in here, I figured the small on the end was good enough and of course the large one on the back is fine. So there, whoops, let me take this off of here. So here is the belly band for the book because when I take it off, it tends to expand. And once I put the, and these don't stay shut to begin with. So once I put it in there, it is really going to open up. And it's not because of gluing stuff. It's just the nature of the watercolor paper being a little bit thick.
Okay, as you can see, I'm ready to put my book together, and I forgot to turn the camera on before I, <laughs> before I realized I was supposed to show this. So let me explain how I did it. Here's the book, and I took a piece of leftover scrap white computer paper. I cut the computer paper according to how long the signature is, like that. Then I took the paper, I folded it in half. Then I took, and this is three quarters of an inch, the same, almost the same as this right here, a little shy three quarters of an inch as this. All right, then I took the half and folded in that half. Then I folded in this half. This is perfect for three signatures. If you have five, it's a little more tricky. Some people just draw lines like this. See the lines? So I took this, and then I put a dot at the cross, cross section of the folds, the micron pen. And I decided I really don't like my the rough side, the stuff that pokes through, to be on the outside of the book. I don't care if it's on the inside, but I don't like for it to be on the outside. So instead of doing it on the inside like I've done in the past, I took this. I laid it down here, and if you're not very good at holding and poking at the same time, you can take um, double stick tape that you know you can rub off, put the tape on the back of here, that way it'll lay flat and it won't move while you're poking the holes. Then you take it and then you know you can rub it all off. So I took this, laid it this way, I took an awl, I poked my holes lightly, and then after I moved the paper, then I went at it with, with a little more force. A little too much on a couple of these. The hole's a little too big. Anyway, so now all this rough stuff is on the inside where I don't care. No one's going to see it really because the signature is going to be laying on top of it. But when you put it on the outside here, everyone can see where you poke the hole. I prefer my stuff to be on the inside. I've learned that I really don't like that rough look on the outside. I really want it to look nice because I spent a lot of time making sure this will look nice. All right, so there's that. And I had to re-poke my holes. So I took, let me, oh here's one I haven't done yet. Okay, so then I'm going to cut out the sewing thread that I used before. And using the same paper, I fold it in half, lay it in the middle, because it's lined up with the ends. I did that on purpose. I fold it to make sure I'm in the middle. And again, if you're not good at this part, you can put that, use your tape runner and put it in there. But now that I know I'm in the fold right here, I'm going to take my pokey tool and poke new holes. And see, now I have double holes, double holes, double holes. So the ones that are closer together, like that one, this one, and this one are the actual holes that are going in the book. If I'd have been smart, I would have done this first when I did the sewing thread. That way all I had to do was pull the sewing thread out, just use a heavier gauge thread, and sewn back into the same holes that were already established and not have to poke twice. Just do as I say, not as I have sloppily done. Alrighty, so now we get the thread out again. I left my needle attached. This is the heavier thread. This is a, I don't know if it's a cotton twine stuff that was evidently two or three pieces thick and I un twirled it because it was too large to go through what I do. All right, so first I'm going to start with this one. And you can go back, forward, forward, backwards, or middle and sides. I suggest you don't start with the middle first because it's a little more awkward trying to flip. It's a lot easier if you just, for me, let's put it that way. For me, it's a lot easier if I do it this way. So there's my hole. 
And um, lots of people will clip this little stray edge to the paste so it doesn't get in the way. I just kind of stick it under my thumb and pray I don't pull it out. And believe you me, I have pulled it out a million times. So this is not a tried and true method. <laughs> Again, do as I say, not as I am done. I think, did I not poke holes in this? <gasps> no, I have not poked the second set of holes in here. Okay, so I guess I'm going to start from one, two, three, from the back because I did the other holes in this one, so we go. In the middle, in the middle. I don't know, you guys have probably seen this method 10 million times. All right, so there's the end. Again, I'm just gonna hold it with my thumb and pray. And then the larger hole is the one that I use the awl on. There we go. Make sure you pull it nice and snug. I'm going to turn it around this way and hold with my thumb down here. The larger hole again. And there's the hole right there. And back in the original hole. There are lots of ways you can stitch this. You can do it so the outside, the thread's on the outside. I prefer the thread on the inside because I like, I like a nice smooth look on the spine. Some people like dangly stuff on their books. I'm not one of those people. All right, so I have pulled snugly a couple times. My thread is on either side of the dividing line. Just gonna do a square knot. Oh, this way. A couple of times around. Done. Oh, and pull that right on off. Okay, didn't have to cut. There's the back of the book. Let's see, the middle one. Have I poked my holes in this one? Yes, I have. Okay, so this one's ready. Start in the middle where the bigger hole is. All right, I'm going to fast forward through the rest of this. Okay, so all the sewing's done, and now I will do a flip through real quick because uh, this video's getting kind of long for you. I'm sorry. All right, so I took inspiration from an Instagram feed or Instagram person called Alice Loves Drawing, and that's where the majority of these have come from. There are a few that are not, but most of them have come from Alice Loves Drawing's little tutor tutorials, both motion like videos and then the stop ones where there's like 10 frames of it so here's the first one cherry blossom this one i have no idea what it is these were a lot of fun this is a zinnia but i didn't put the stems and the leaves on them I don't know what flower this was, but I just loved it. It looked like a cotton bowl. It's not, but then I did the one where um, she had all kinds of just flowers and then colored in with the black pen in the open spaces. This one was so much fun to do. 
I'm thinking this might be a weed of some kind. I don't know. This, I don't know. Don't care. I just love them. I know this is a hydrangea. I think this is my most favorite one to draw. It's super easy to do. Tulip. Have no idea what this one is. Pansies, a rose. I'm thinking this is a lily of some kind, but I can't remember. Don't know what this is, don't care. <laughs> daffodil, she did a daffodil with colored pencils and I tried and I decided I really don't like it with colored pencils. It's okay, but I'm more a black and white artist, I think. I'm more into the black and white doodles than anything else. I love this too. Just flowers. I like this one. Carnations. And these are, I think, are a daisy of some sort. This looks like it might be those globe flowers that kind of go out with clover. I'm not sure what this is. It almost looks like a tulip bush. And the last one is a hibiscus. So there is my miniature flower book with my belly band. And I will put down the two places that I got inspiration from for the flowers. One of them was called Florals Your Way, which is also an Instagram group. And then Alice Loves Drawing on Instagram. None of these came from YouTube. All these came from Instagram. So if you don't have an Instagram account, I would get one. There's tons of stuff to look at. If you don't want any interaction with anybody, no one knows you've been there, come and gone. There's no telltale sign. Only if you put a heart or a comment does anybody know you're ever looking and not liking something. Or if you really love it, you know, you leave a comment or whatever. So there's no trace. <laughs> anyway, so this is for Art Joy of Sharing for the hop, my favorite things. Please check out all the other people in the hop positions below and have a great time with the hop. I can't remember. Is this a hashtag? I guess this is a hop. Anyway, so I hope you enjoy it. And go to Art Joy Sharing Facebook page and join that Facebook page. There's always something, a new theme every month for it. And I think every other month or every couple months we do a hop. So you should get on the wagon train for the hop. Bring more viewers to your YouTube channel. Plus you have a good time and meet new people. Okay, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I will see you guys next time. Bye.